Greetings, my table. What a pleasure it is to be bringing you the Word of God again on this the third Sunday. We thank God for the opportunity to share in His Word. We've been blessed. God has washed over us and blessed us tremendously. But it's time now that we study the Word of God. I'd like to invite you today to the teaching ministry here at Mount Tabor. We have teaching ministries on Wednesdays and, of course, Sunday school at 11 o'clock. But especially today, more than preach, we'd like to share with you some doctrinal teachings from the Word of God. We have two sets of scriptures we want to enjoy today. We want to exposite and go through. These scriptures are found in the book of Revelation, the third chapter, verse 10, as well as in 1 Thessalonians, fourth chapter, verse 13 through 17. And let us stick on verse 18 as well, close out that chapter. In the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, beginning at the fourth chapter, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also those who sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Revelation, Jesus again speaking this time says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world. Uh, come upon the all the world. Sisters and brothers, I, I, I choose to do this doctrinal teaching today because there are a lot of questions that the church are facing. Questions like, what is God up to? Are we in, going into the end times? Is Jesus really fit to come back any day now? We, 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 we in the midst of this COVID-19, in the midst of all the food shortages, the pandemic, the shortages of finances, and we're just really puzzled. The church is confused in many instances, mixed up. And we're asking, what is God up to? Well, there's no new answer. I wish I had a new answer. There's no, re no new revelations. We stand where we always stood. Where is that? We're standing in the anticipation of Christ's soon return. We're standing in anticipation of his answers to his promises. In the book of John, 14th chapter, verse 3, Christ said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. And then in Revelation 3 and 10, it says, He will keep us from the hour of trial or temptation, which shall come upon the whole world. Brothers and sisters, Paul gives us the mannerism of the events we are waiting for in answer to Christ's promises. In 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 13 through 17, Paul gives detailed information on what we are to expect as we wait. And he encourages us in verse 18 to comfort one another with these words. We wish to set out to focus on verse 17. And there are two words in verse 17 that really grasp our thoughts. These words are caught up 
in the King James Version. We oftentimes refer to this caught up, this phrase, as rapture. The word rapture, of course, is not literally in the Bible, but there is the word caught up. So what does it mean to be caught up? It means to be snatched out, taken out, or pulled out. So in light of this, we need to ask why we as a church in this hour have no new revelations while we stand in answer to the promises of God and in the expectation that he will come and give us a reception like none other when he receives us unto himself. So if you would just patiently uh, wait for me a few minutes, we want to look at at least seven reasons why the church is waiting in anticipation of the rapture. The first one is, number one, that the Lord has promised to do that. He has promised that he will come again and receive us unto himself, that where he is, there we may be also. Jesus knows in his omniscience that the world and things are getting better, better, in no aspects, but are really getting worse. Jesus knows that the troubles of the world have come before him. So he's promised that he'll come back and snatch us out, pull us out, rapture us, catch us up. So I'd like to share this, and that is that we're to be raptured, taken out of all this. And that is our hope. That is what we wait for. That is why we prayerfully, trustingly, faithfully wait his appearance. Because he has promised us to catch us up. Then, number two, Jesus' desire above all else is that we be with him. The main reason for his coming and dying and rising again was that we would be with him. And that's also why he says he's away making preparations for us. Remember John 14 and 1 when Christ said, Behold, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, that you may be also. It is because he has a strong desire that we be with him. But it's Paul that gives us the mannerism of this. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17, we are reminded over and over again throughout Scripture, but especially in 1 Thessalonians, that Christ has promised us that he's coming back at the sound of a shout and the trump and the voice of the archangel, and at which time he will receive us unto himself. And he closes that chapter with, these words, know this, that you are to comfort one another with these words. Isn't it so uh, uh, reassuring and comforting to know that Christ has promised that he'll come back and receive us unto himself, that he's away preparing a place for us, that where he is, there we can be also. But there's another reason why the rapture ought to be caught up is why we are waiting and why we are anticipating and that is that Christ wants to reveal in us even more the glory and the honor that's due him. Things like he wants to reveal in us why God calls him his only begotten son and why God loves him above all other creation. Why God loves him even from the foundation of the world. And why Jesus is preferred above all other creation. At the present, as you very well know, we only have a foretaste of Christ. We have him living in us true. And, and, but we can really only imagine how it will be when we stand with him and stand in him before the Father, seated on the right hand of the Father. Yes, brothers and sisters, there is another reason why we are waiting 
to be caught up. Why there's no new revelation. Nothing else that we need to do. It's due to the troubling times. And the troubling situations. And also due to troubling people. The rapture. The catching up is needful. It is needful that we avoid all the trials and tribulations that befall our nation, our world, our country. Now, let us not forget also that there's another reason why the rapture is needful. And that is because of eternity. Did not Paul in verse 17 of 1 Thessalonians declare that when we come back and rapture us, we will ever be with the Lord. Praise God for that. The rapture is absolutely necessary. It's absolutely necessary because we are promised an eternity with Christ. Well, Rip, is there any more? Is there any other reasons why or what the church should be doing at a time like this? Yeah. We should be in anticipation of our rewards. In Revelation 22 and 12, when, when John was on the Isle of Patmos, as you recall, John was given a vision, and Christ told him along about the 22nd chapter, the 12th verse, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Yes, my sisters and brothers, we are waiting in anticipation of the rapture, the snatching out, the catching away of the saints in this day and in this hour, because there's a crown in time. There is the day promised that Christ has promised to give us at least five crowns. Amen. Lastly, we are waiting in anticipation of the rapture, anticipating nothing else. There's no other prophetic promise that precedes the waiting on the rapture that we have to anticipate because, number seven, there must be a catching away for a new order of worship, for us to go back with him. When he comes to get us, there will be a reward. And the rewards will be, my sisters and brothers, a millennial reign, when we'll get to reign with him for a thousand years, that we will witness with Jesus the great white throne judgment of all unbelievers. And not only that, it'll be followed by us witnessing and even judging angels so declares the word so what are we to do while we wait to be prayerful to be faithful to be trustful to know that he has not left us without a promise to come back and receive us unto himself so i close with the words of paul paul declared in fifth chapter of first thessalonians verse six let us not be asleep as do others. But let us watch. Let us be sober. But, and then he says in verse 17, pray. Be prayerful. Pray without ceasing. My sisters and brothers, there's nothing else to happen. The pandemic, all these things, these things will come. These things will be. Jesus in one place said, these are only the beginning of sorrows. But we are to faint not to hold to our faith, to believe in the living Christ and an anticipated return. Jesus also made it clear that it could come at any hour, come as a thief in the night. Let us give God the praise and Jesus the praise for the promise of the rapture, that it is needful, that that is what we anticipate. The church has to do nothing else but to wait for the sounding of the trumpet and the archangel come and receive us unto him that we might ever be with the Lord. Let us give God glory, give him praise, give him honor, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor is not in vain in 